thank you very much. Very generous of you. I am Stanford Chidge, and this, of course, is the Chelsea Football Fancast. Now, normally around this time, we do something called You Are On CFC. And there's a lovely picture of the old benches. I mean, I, I think they just do that to make me moist, really, probably. Anyway, um, You Are On CFC is what we normally do in this part of the show. Uh, and that's really where you lot out there who are watching uh, and listening can get involved with the show. They can, you can throw up a question. You can get us to answer stuff. You can start a debate about anything you like, really, as long as it's to do with Chelsea or Jonathan Kidd's acting career. Uh, and to do that, what you have to do is you either listen to the show or join in in the chat on the, uh, the Mixler website, which is mixlr.com forward slash Chelsea hyphen fancast. Occasionally we have a graphic which tells you that. There we go. How lovely. <laughs> Uh, alternatively, you can email us, chelseafancast at gmail.com. And uh, also, uh, you can uh, tweet us. Uh, and the Twitter address is at chelseafancast. There we go. And that's the easiest way to get involved. Now, another thing we like to do is to get you on the phone. Or, in fact, a Skype video call is very, very lovely. And if you want to actually talk to us directly, you can add us on Skype. And the Skype address is chelsea.com. Fancast. There we go. Well done, boys in the gallery. That was pretty good stuff. Now, we're not doing that this week. We're kind of doing something different. There's a lovely bloke who we're going to speak to shortly called uh, Alan, who quite often digs me out on Twitter. Quite right, too. I wholeheartedly embrace and encourage that. But he does not like John Obi Mikel. He thinks he's rubbish. In fact, he thinks he's poo, Jonathan. Yeah, the woman I sit next to. Yeah, as well, a lot of people do. I mean, it is, you know, I mean, he is a Marmite player, and I think we've grown to accept that over the last few years. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we did a proper, proper old debate? about John Obi Mikel and whether people rate him or not. I've, I've, there's, a, there's a poll that's been going on uh, for the last 24 hours on the website. A very simple question. John Obi Mikel, do you rate him, yes or no? And it'd be very interesting to see what people who look at our website, <laughs> chelseafancast.com, they have to say about that. Um, I've got some, some brilliant stats, which I'm going to do first, Darren, uh, which we've got the Chad Meister to dig out, which, which is very, very interesting. Um, games, this is kind of, I presume, Chad, whether we've won them or not, is it? Uh, yeah, whether... Oh, my goodness me, they're up on the screen. I didn't expect that. That's quality. We can all discuss this. What do those stats actually mean, Chad? Can you just take me through those? Yeah, so since Mikel made his debut in 2006, Chelsea have played 466 games. Uh, he's, uh, as it says on your screen there, with, he's played 306 of those games. And Chelsea have played 158 without him. So he's, he's played in two-thirds of two the game. Two-thirds of them, yeah? Yeah. And we've won with him 60%. Yeah, when he plays, we win, we've won 59% of the games uh, and lost 18%. And without him, we've actually won 65%. And lost only 13. So we win, we win more without Mikel than we do with him. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we win more without him. Statistically speaking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Statistic clean sheets. I'm not so bothered. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should look at the clean sheets it's one. Bit, it's a bit damning, though. Isn't well, it? I, well, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, there's the, the, basically less clean sheets uh, with him. That sounds so wrong when I say it like that. Less <laughs> clean sheets with Mikel uh, than there are without him. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not a lot of difference in there, but <clears throat> um, yeah, slightly higher at keeping clean sheets without him playing in the game. Um, and then in terms of the team scoring goals, uh, they scored 557 in games where he's played, which is an average of 1.8 goals a game, compared to when he's not playing, they've scored 351. So it's actually 2.2 goals. Yeah, I mean, you know, the fact score. of the matter is, Chad Meister, those stats are pretty damning, aren't they? Which just proves to me... Uh, very, very, very simply, that there are lies, there are damn lies, and then there are Chelsea Chatter statistics. Well, it's, ob it's obviously <laughs> quite loaded in the, in the sense that this kind of game, particularly in the last three or four years, that you'd be more inclined to pick McKellen is often one where it's a tighter game, where there'll be less goals, where there'll be higher margins, you know, where the team's setting out defensively to go for a draw or to go to try and snatch a win, whereas when we're Going for the game, he's not quite as essential. So, well, I think alternatively, he's rubbish. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, actually, before we start, before we go to the pros and cons, let's get get let's out everybody here. I personally am a fan of Mikel. I think he does a great job for the team, and I'll explain why later. Pablo, oh, I've got a long answer. Well, can you make it short? <laughs> um, I think he probably doesn't deserve to be first choice anymore, and he hasn't pushed on anywhere near as much as he should have done. 
I can't but, accept that as yeah, an answer. I agree okay. completely. You, you, so you two are kind of like, I'm pro Mokel, m- 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 pro no, Mokel, I, I, pro I, I, Mokel, I, I, you're I, anti. No, I'm, I'm not anti. I like him, and I think he's put in some fantastic performances, but I don't think he's progressed, and I think Matic is a much it's better spot, player. Spot, so I, totally I think we should look at Mikel in the round. We'll, we'll have Matic as a side issue. I know it's important and relevant, but let's just look at Mikel as a whole. Okay. okay. I mean, are you pro or, or anti? Yes or no? I think what I said, it's, I'm, it's, I'm it's pro. Yes you're kind of in the between. It's, it's, it's not a yes yeah. or no. Like I, don't, I don't have any problem with him, yeah. but... You're both woolly, I'm not, I'm you're not woolly like the, pinko just, liberals. No, Make a I'm decision not, for like goodness sake. Door, <laughs> who sits next door to me who just says, oh, there he is, I hate him, oh, get him off. Yeah. Not like that at all. Are you, sure, are you sure she's not saying well. to you, knowing that you are a famous actor, she's not saying, get him off, Jonathan, get, get him off, get him off. Get him off. I she's think what, she might be. She's talking get about my trousers. I think she might be, mate. Yeah, you might have pulled so. there, yeah, son. Yeah, Something no, about so. a Rabona. Yeah. She's, she's married yeah. to a very large... Is that a Rabona in your pocket, or you just for you to see She's married to a very large shaven-headed builder who sits with her, so it's unlikely that she'll be... This isn't really about her opinions of it. Can we move on from that? Well said. Darren, pro or no? Um, just to steal Pablo and now John's um, out of the this. Yeah, that I do like him, but he isn't world class. He isn't. I don't think you can rely on him. I don't think he's ever got as good as everyone thought he was going to get. Yeah. He is a very good squad player. He's only to bring on in matches, and I'd definitely see him start matches. But he isn't like the finished article. He hasn't got as many dimensions to this game as Matic. Can, can, can I have a second? Can I have a second? When he was I, first, um, when, when the United book were thinking they, they had him, he was supposed to be this great, yeah, fantastic yeah. star. Were you expecting none of this? No, no, I, I, honestly, I came onto the show tonight and, and I, I didn't know what I was going to expect because I don't give a damn, really. I mean, it, it is what it is, you know. And I, as you know, I always encourage you to think exactly what you think. But what I would say to summarise that is that, that you're, you're, you know... <sighs> You, you, you're slightly negative about him. I mean, you know, if you if you had a big scale of like no Mikel there and yes Mikel there, you're kind of slightly more towards the no, but you you're not anti him. I get that. Well, there are some games when yeah. he plays out of his skin, and yeah. you think, no, actually, he contributed. One you have an, a, a very intelligent when... view. I would sum, summarize that up. I'm not trying to dig you out here. I, I am a bit more positive about Mikel because I think I understand why he plays the way he does. What do you like out there on the benches? Think, Chad? What's the kind of uh, the, don't, don't give me the website poll yet. We'll save that for later. But just a general thing amongst yourselves, the people out there. <coughs> well, myself, no? pers- myself personally, I, I, I do like him. I prefer him to Matic at the moment. <gasps> Whoa, um, yeah, old claim. I do. Like it, Chad. Yeah, oh. I, I, the, for me, the thing that Matic is lacking is a right foot. He's <gasps> such a one-footed player. Whoa, for, in claim. my in my opinion, um, from the it. early things, from you know, from the early games we've seen him. And we know that it takes a while to um, really embed yourself to really uh, after a while to really see the best of any of these players. But um, for me, I, I would have Mikel over Matic. Good. And what, what about the other lads? It's, uh, by the way, before we go on, I know you've all tried to take it down this route. This is not Mikel v Matic. This is about Mikel. So. Rain it in, Mikel, not Mikel v. Matted. You but I take like a point. in the same position. You almost set Matted Shut up, Darren. <laughs> what do the others say? What, what, what's the gaffer and the chef and the gaffer, the chef and the baker? Uh, Tinker Taylor, uh, soldier spy. Uh, I think uh, Matt, uh, sorry, uh, Mikel's given a role and he plays that role. Yeah. He can play further up the field. He can play as an attacking midfielder. He does that for Nigeria, apparently. Um, so he's, he has that ability. He's just given a role at Chelsea. He's, it was just a sharp, sharp shot. All right. I'm going to quickly lay out what I see of the pros and the cons. I mean, I mean, a lot of the, the, the accusations that are levelled at Mikel are, you know, the first one is usually that he's he's way too slow. He slows the game down, but he's too slow. Too slow is what they say. I've heard them. I, I like you. You know, I don't have some bird next to me um, who's saying get him off. I go too slow. <laughs> Stop passing it backwards. Too, too slow. slow. No, they will say that. Done again. Look, 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 that's look. The next one. He loses possession all the time. Yeah. He's got a poor first touch. He never, I, ever, I, yeah. ever passes forward. He always passes sideways or back. He comes on as a savage. Yeah. He goes, oh, no. I love this one. There's a photograph to prove that all the haters out there. There's a photograph. Here we go. That proves how ill-disciplined he is. There we go. It's got. A, I'll give you a clue, boys, in the gallery. It's got Mark Clattenburg in it. No, I want it again. <laughs> I wasn't looking. One, two, three. Boom. There we go. He's ill-disciplined. Um, I mean, Pablo was saying this a few of the others around the table. He was like, well, he's had long enough to prove himself, you know. 
as all of that. He never ever scores, and his shots are often wayward. Oh, he's dreadful. He can't and uh, and there you go. So there's a lot of kind of hate out there for Mikel, and it no, all it all hate. see it's yeah. Well, it's I'm just talking. Ge- I'm not talking around the table. I'm talking generally. We, we 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 seek perfection in our team. We all do. I see. I see. I, I, I seek perfection I, on the Chelsea fancast, but I'm very happy to settle for what I have. Realistically, no, because I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Most most of those criticisms are unfair. Like, but that's really. what people say. It's not no, my I, words. No, it's what I know, people say. Like, you're putting words into our mouths, though, as well. But I wish yeah. I could. You be a better been. show. Oh. Yeah, and we do under Mourinho, though we do seek. Uh, you, know, you can see his vision. His vision is he wants the team to be. We seek the lager of Le Monde. But we do, we do, we do seek something <laughs> that is is every player contributes in in a in a beautiful machine, but has their own moments of of, of brilliance. And can I? He, can I? He dragged it down a bit. I, I love this. You know what? I, I, I just I've got three of you, probably the whole world, onto me, and I like those odds. That's a chidge type of situation. But you don't, because no one's saying any of the things you're that you're saying that we're saying. Mate, <laughs> hey, I don't need you to have an argument. I have one in an empty room. I was going to go that you weren't listening to our actual opinions. You were treating us what if I ever listened to what you guys <laughs> You were treating us not 100% backing Obi Mikel as I was saying that he is rubbish. That's essentially what you did. That's why I love you, Darren. Can we just like run out what the, the counter arguments to... Uh, to this might well, be. Why don't you do it? You're the only one that likes him, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf, on behalf of the, on behalf of the Chelsea fan cast, just... on behalf, on behalf of the Chelsea fan cast, I'll just pass it sideways each question. <laughs> <laughs> because the others don't have a viewpoint that's worth listening to, so I will, I will take on the mantle, literally and metaphorically. Like yes, yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, but clever, I mean, it's, clever. It, it's a real shame actually because I had that's lined up, I had lined up. I'm now going to out them for, for being rotten and letting me down, but I did actually have lined up. Up tonight, I had Joe tweets on Twitter lined up. Where is he? He's on the he's on the source somewhere tonight, I think. But and we also had Grant James, who, who's a really good he? football analyst. He, he lives in South Africa, and he, he writes very eloquently on on, on why Mikel is a good thing. Uh, and I actually went back and I looked at Joe's great great article that he had on the plains of Almeria, and uh, also on the CFC UK fanzine about Mikel. He wrote an ode to Mikel. Ob, Ob, he said. No, it didn't start like that. It should have done, though, shouldn't it? It should have done. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I mean, he's basically saying that. I mean, you know, you, you got to look at what he's won. He's won a Premier League, four FA Cups, one League Cup, one Community Shield, a European Cup, a Europa Cup. So he's, fine on its own. So, so he's quite clearly, you know, Ross, he quite Ross, clearly hasn't been a failure. No, Ross, Ross Turnbull's won a European Cup. In, in, in a way, so what? You know, in a way, you could say so what. I mean, there we go. Actually, that, that picture's a really good way of doing that. And you know, was fabulous. One of the really people in that photograph, that one of the people in that photograph is a legend. The others are not. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you, uh, Morellas is won a European it, Cup. It, I mean, you know, it, so it doesn't really mean anything. Kalu was in that picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why I picked that especially for you, Jonathan. But Mikel is streets ahead of Kalu. Oh, no. in his but anyway, the point is this: is that I think the more significant point is that you know, when when it comes to uh, you know unbelievable performances, I mean, he was man of the match in the European Cup he final. He was brilliant. He was Absolutely a man of the brilliant. match. Brilliant. He did his job to the yes. letter. Yes. Yeah? yeah he agree. was the man of the match. I and agree. he always turns up for those big games. I mean, the Barcelona. The Barcelona, home and away. You know, he was brilliant in that. Yeah, the number yeah. of times he's yeah. monstered Arsenal. The Man United FA Cup final win. He turns up, puts in stellar performances in those games. Thanks, Greg. Um, he, I mean, he monsters people like Cazorla, Fabregas, Messi, Iniesta. Had him in his pocket. You know, that's, that's the kind of player he is on but that is day. Is there something about consistency then? Oh, I think you might have a point there. I, I concede that. I think there, I think there is, you know, maybe a point. He turns from the big games, but he can be dozy as hell in some of the others, and he has been. I will admit that. Perhaps he, he loses concentration. Perhaps it's been a, it's the other been thing a... I would say about it is, though, I mean, you know, I think you have to understand that he, uh, you know, he, he he is there to do a very dirty job that nobody else wants to do. He is there to be uh, the linchpin in front of the back four, you know, to go and win the ball and to give it out, uh, you know, distribute it in the, in the least risky way possible. And that's what he does. And I think a lot of people don't understand the fact that, yes, he does lose the possession. Just bear me out. He does lose possession a fair bit. You know, he does get caught in possession a lot. But he's receiving the ball in far more intense situations than a lot of the other players are because of the position that he's in. Um, um, we got, got quickly because I've got Alan on the line. Now. The only point I'd interject is the point that we switched from a 4 3 3 to a 4 2 3 1 is the point that that role on its own stopped being enough. That's when he had to start 
looking forward and making runs and progressing in a way that he hadn't done. When he was playing as the holding midfielder, then fine, but when it became two men in midfield, he had more of a role to play and he hasn't quite fulfilled that. I think you could say that about a lot of the team, though. I mean, you know, Frank's having to adjust, a lot of them are having to adjust to the new foot. We've been going on for more than long enough. And we got Alan on the line, because Alan, Alan's going like, to absolutely hammer into me, I hope, and tell me how wrong I am to think that Mikel's any good. Am I right, Alan, or what? No. <laughs> Oh, we can see you as well. Hello, mate. Lovely to see and hear you. Welcome to the Chelsea Fancast at long last, my friend. I have all Right, so come on then. Tell me, tell me. I mean, we were having a bit of a spat on Twitter the other night. So, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Mikel's because I think I understand, no. you know, what he's about. But you don't, you, you're not having it, are you? You're a cloud of controversy. It's just haven't gone too well for him. Okay, it was through back the Man City game. Okay, we had haven't we? We had Matic in there. We kept the up there quite. The second game in the cup, we had uh, McDowell in there that the week, and we just got a rent of pressure. Mate, I tell you, you, you've got a bit Norman Collier. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are who are under the age of thirty, you don't know what that means. It means that the mic's going in and out. So I can't really hear him very well. Can we can we try and sort that out, Greg? Because I really want to hear what Alan's saying. You what? Can you hear me? It's his end. It's because he's on the phone. Well, I don't know, but I, I I mean I didn't really understand what he said at all, Greg. So it's, it's pretty about pointless. Man City but... games, but I couldn't get you. Yeah. It's only about width, maybe. He said about the second game. I mean, one one of the other things that I would say is is this is that. You know, we, we sit here, uh, you know, a lot, or a lot of people, I mean, like Alan, for example, is saying that um, on Twitter that, that, that he's too slow, la, la, la. but I mean, he does a job for the team. He's very, very self-sacrificing. Steve Turo on, on, on Mixer said the same thing, that he has sacrificed the way that he plays for the team, and he always has done for Chelsea. He plays in a completely different way for Nigeria. I mean, it's really interesting. Chadder and I were looking at the website earlier on. A lot of Nigerians wound them up a bit. They're all commenting on the website. Uh, I mean, what you, got a kind of gist of what some of the Nigerians were saying. I mean, they're a bit unhappy with the way that Mikel's been, you know, made to sacrifice his naturally attacking game for the team. Yeah, um, they're saying that Mourinho's killed Mikel's uh, midfield instincts. <laughs> Can you read it in the, in the style of... No. Like, no, OK, maybe not. No, that's <laughs> the... <laughs> I've got myself in a bit camply. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, Can you read it in the style of Larry Grayson? Um, no. No. <laughs> No. So I, I but the they, um, yeah, they agree with what Gaffer said earlier that if you go and watch him play for Nigeria as an attacking midfielder, you'll you'll see the qualities that he had, and it's just uh, well, ever it's since the, play the African Nations Cup, wasn't it, or the African Cup of Nations? Yeah, I just want to take you back to something you said about Steve as well. He's made some really good points about he uh, Mikel. He said. Um, as a young man and an attacking midfielder, he had to swallow his pride at a young age to be moulded into the McAlady role. He kept Xavi and Iniesta in his pocket for the Champions League semi-finals. <coughs> Bayern got nothing um, when he played the middle in the Champions League final. And finally, um, he was man of the match against Stoke the day he was told that his father had been kidnapped. Yes, I yeah. remember that. And he was very intelligent and, and articulate. I remember that very well. Look, we've got Alan back on the line. Hopefully it'll work. Very unusually for me, I'm going to let Alan possibly have the last word. Alan, I hope we can hear you, mate. Can you hear me, Can you hear me, Chich? I can That's hear it. you. Hallelujah. Right, tell me very quickly your point about Mikel. Okay, what I was saying earlier is that Having come to the club under a cloud of controversy, things just haven't gone too well for him. And every manager we've had, from Avram Grant all the way up to the Spanish waiter, they seem to find him out. Mm. And now Mourinho has also found him out. I, Alan, you know what? I tell you what. What I will concede with you, because we—I don't know if you were able to hear what we were saying before—but as most of the boys around this table, Jonathan and Daza and, and Pablo, particularly, whenever I started discussing Mikel, they all started to go on about Matic and saying, "Well, you know, uh, you know, Matic looks a much better player." He, he, I mean, t tell him yourself. You don't need me to, to speak for you. I think with Benitez, though, it wasn't necessarily that he found Mikel out. He just preferred playing David Luiz there. He had someone else that he'd rather... And... Have Ramirez, who can also come back to his soon as well. Yeah, but, I mean, I always said that I thought Mikel should have been playing in away matches, where we need to be more defensive. Home matches, you don't need a Mikel ask character there. There's a question as well. There's a possibility that Mikel will be leaving the stuff. I, well, I, you know, I think I think a lot of people have said that, Alan, and I think there may be a point. I mean, look, just to close this, because we've got we got to move on, because we've got a break coming up. But I think, you know, bottom line is Matic does look a much better player. 
in that kind of position, in the kind of way that we want to play. And I think you might find that he may look to go somewhere else because he is only 26. Personally, I would like him to stay. I think you need different kinds of players in the squad, horses for courses. And I think that Mikel is the right horse for that particular course when you want to close down a game, take this thing out of it and shut it down. That, I'm afraid, is all we've got time for for the debate. Uh, sorry we couldn't get Alan on earlier, but that's the way it lies sometimes. We will be back in a very short time for the, for the last bit of the show, the final furlong.